Life is full of things to manage. Your work, your family, your plans, and your treatment. Consider Kesimpta, Ofatumumab 20 milligram injection. You can take it yourself from the comfort of home. If you're ready for something different, ask your healthcare provider about Kesimpta and check out the details at kesimpta.com. Brought to you by Novartis Pharmaceuticals Corporation. This episode is brought to you by Simply by Frito-Lay. These days, you have a lot going on. But now, thanks to Simply by Frito-Lay, you have one less thing to worry about. So kick back and enjoy your favorite Frito-Lay snacks with ingredients to feel good about, like Simply Blue Corn Tostitos, Sea Salted Ruffles, and even White Cheddar Cheetos Puffs. All made with no artificial colors or flavors. Enjoy what you love and look for Simply Brand snacks online or at a store near you. The key to sustainable leadership lies in the ability to thrive in uncertainty, ambiguity, and change. Grand Heron International brings you the Coaching Assistance Program, giving your employees on-demand coaching to manage through a challenging situation and arrive at a solution. Visit grandheroninternational.ca slash podcast to learn more. This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. Welcome to the Keep Leading Podcast, a podcast dedicated to promoting leadership development and sharing leadership insights. Here's your host, the Leadership Accelerator, Eddie Turner. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Keep Leading Podcast, the podcast dedicated to leadership development and insights. I'm your host, Eddie Turner, the Leadership Accelerator. I work with leaders to accelerate performance and drive impact through the power of executive coaching, facilitation, and professional speaking. One of the principles of the Keep Leading podcast is that almost everyone has the capacity to lead. To that end, I explore different facets of leadership on this show. Today, I will share a different type of leadership. I'm calling this Leading Behind the Lens. I'm going to interview John D'Amato. After John did work for me, I wrote a note in the book I signed for him that said, you make moments matter. How does John make moments matter? John is a branded lifestyle portrait and virtual photographer who collaborates with expert-based business owners to create an emotional connection with their audiences through persuasive visual storytelling. Here to tell us more, is John D'Amato. John, welcome to the Keep Leading Podcast. Well, thank you, Eddie. And after that wonderful intro, I uh, am even happier to be here. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Well, John, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Sure. So as you mentioned, I work with experts, speakers, trainers, authors, consultants, different types of business owners, some in the executive suite. And what we try to do is capture image content that visually punctuates the sentiment of every single story they want to tell, whether it's a story of vulnerability all the way up to and including moments of joy and success and happiness and everything in between. Now, that's what you do. But what about you? Tell me about John. Me? I'm just some crazy kid from Astoria, Queens, that one day decided that working for someone else wasn't my cup of tea anymore. So I decided to jump out the window, quit my job, and start a business while never having the thought of starting a business prior to that point. (laughs) And here you are. There I am. Now, you refer to it as branded lifestyle photography. What is that? Branded lifestyle portrait photography is the image content that acts as a fly on the wall. It's candid photography 
that captures my client's day-to-day activities so that it gives their audience the opportunity to get a sense of what working with them looks like, what brainstorming ideas looks like for my clients, to give their audience the opportunity to see, to get an entry point into their life, to give them an opportunity to engage their content. We want to create relationships as business owners, especially as expert business owners. And the way to do that is by demystifying your processes for those that you serve. And visually, you can do that by capturing what your world looks like and then offer that up to your audience to give them that understanding. How is this different from regular photography? Well, The difference between a branded lifestyle portrait and, say, a headshot is that the onus is in the headshot is to look directly into the camera. Now, those images are also included in a branded lifestyle portrait session, but the stress is on capturing images that allow people a sense to feel welcomed into the frame. So instead of just looking into the camera, which is more of a look at me kind of photo. Hey, everybody look at me. It's more of a, hey, come with me on my journey as I show you how I can help transform your life in whatever the area of expertise for that particular person is. So more than just a normal headshot, I love your phrase, you would invite the viewer into the frame. And you're giving people a glimpse into the person's daily life, their activities, and revealing a different side of them. Yes. In addition to that, Eddie, the added layer, the uh, the vanilla frosting, if you will, is the also illustrating that expert's personality, areas of their personality through their facial expression and their body language and the way that they're engaging whatever lifestyle activity that they are participating in while that photo was being taken. So it not only shows the audience what they do, how they do it and why they do it, but it also gives them a sense of who that person is simply based on the emotional sentiment created by that person's expression and body language. So it all kind of works together to really inform their audience of what this person's all about. If I'm a leader, why does that matter to me? As a leader, it's important to illustrate your expertise. It's important to illustrate your level of confidence in your own uh, ability to help solve people's problems in the way in which you solve them. And when you reinforce your powerful words that you share through your content and your website and the way you express yourself on a podcast such as this, the way that you visually punctuate all of those sentiments that you want to impart upon that audience and inspire them to want to learn more about you, to capture their attention is through the way in which you express those aspects in your image content, through your expression, through your posture, as well as, again, the activities in which you're participating in the photo. Thank you, John. It's interesting because we have always heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. And that might even be more true today as we live in the world of Instagram and or Insta, as the young people would say, you don't say the whole word anymore, right? Yeah, no, no, that's too hard. (laughs) It's too difficult to say the extra four letters. Yes, I know. (laughs) I I show my age when I say the whole word, but it puts an emphasis on what you do for leaders and that of capturing the essence of them in a way that perhaps people are not used to seeing. And I normally say the website at the end of the session, but if you are listening to John and I talk right now, I invite you to go to johndemodel.com as we're speaking. Certainly, we're going to drop the links into the, the episode so that you can press that on your devices and go directly to it and see exactly what he's talking about and how John brings people to life. And John... Normally, I don't ask people for a client list, but in your case, when we're talking about this, give people just a a glimpse of some of the big names you've worked with and you've helped bring to life. Well, I have 
I photographed Seth Godin once at an event. I've worked with a lot of people in the National Speakers Association, people such as former past president. You know, I photographed Ron Carr speaking. I photographed people like Sylvie DeGiusto and Phil Jones and people like that. I've also worked with C-suite folks such as Jeff Hazlett and dozens and dozens of other experts along the line within both of those communities. And um, it's pretty inspiring working with folks that are very successful and very driven and, and passionate and, and, and very generous with their time with other emerging experts coming up the pipeline. So I'm very lucky, very grateful. So from the biggest names in marketing to the biggest names in the National Speakers Association, the most recognized brand of top speakers in the world uh, belong to that association, the C-suite network where the executives are and where people who serve executives are. You have worked with all of them. In fact, John D'Amato has gone from being someone we did not know to being the only person you call when you have an event as a speaker, when you have an event as a facilitator, trainer, coach. He's the person who we all are using. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's I have to say, Eddie, it's been quite a journey. I remember when I first started working as a photography sponsor or volunteering as a photography sponsor for the New York City chapter of the National Speakers Association. And it, what I now know is that I essentially was working with an all star team of people. And it's never lost on me how fortunate I am to be in that particular chapter. Yes, that the New York City chapter of the National Speakers Association, I, I, I'm partial. That's where you and I met. That's one of the chapters I've belonged to. It is the rock star chapter. I didn't know that when I joined. I joined because I was on a contract in New York and I couldn't be a part of my what was at the time my home chapter. And mm -hmm. I immediately fell in love with them. They, they adopted me and took me in. And you and I met as a result. So I'm even more grateful that I joined that chapter. <laughs> That's right. And I got a book out of the deal. So I was pretty psyched about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, John, and you know, when I, when I talk about leading behind the lens, you're taking the lead and helping leaders present their best self as a leader, but you're leading when you're working with them. And it's an aspect of leadership that people may not easily recognize because you're influencing them. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. It, it's a dance. Anytime that I work with someone in front of the camera, there is, there is a, uh, a dance of establishing rapport and having a conversation going on and essentially getting the person comfortable enough because for many folks, regardless of what their status is, how successful they are, there are people, people have certain things that kind of bother them about the way they look. So one of the things that I work on is put on the psychology hat and work them that way. Another way is having conversations with them to get them comfortable because the effort is made to get someone in a place where their guard is dropped. They are open and receptive to direction, which I give heavy, heavy, heavy amounts of direction in any session that I shoot. And to get them in a place where they're revealing authentic, honest expressions of aspects of their personality. And there is a lot of work that goes into that. And then on top of that, there is the marketing aspect. I don't just show up in front of the camera with a camera and start, you know, snapping away the shutter button. There is a heavy amount of strategy that goes on before hand because I need to know what are these photos for? Who are your people? What are you all about? What are the nuances and wrinkles in your processes that we can illustrate visually in these photos so that they are the most honest representation of how you live your life and the work that you do for others in service? So there is, there, there's a lot involved before and during the session. Indeed. And so you take these people who are used to being in command, being in charge, and they willingly submit themselves to you. And the final product is flawless. So you are exemplifying leading through influence as you lead behind the lens. 
You know, and Eddie, you know, that is true. But also one of the things that I've noticed is these these particular experts, especially the higher up the food chain you go and the level of success that they have, the more open that they are to my direction and the more not only open, but encourage it because they don't want to have to think about how these images are created. They, there's a level of trust. And that only comes over time through these conversations, through the strategy and through the photos that we're creating throughout the session. You know, I allow we we spot check all these photos throughout because that is what helps build that trust so that they are able to let me do my thing and get what we need for them. Well done, John. And is there a lesson in this for other photographers who may not see themselves as leaders? Yeah. One of the biggest lessons that I had to learn was, number one, put the blinders on and stop worrying about what every other photographer is doing, because that prevents you from tapping within yourself to find what makes your images uniquely yours. And that will have a direct result on the deliverables that you create for your audience. The more that you are in tune with who you are and your own confidence in your work behind the camera, that will naturally elevate the quality of your work to a place that it would not normally go if you just continue to mimic what other photographers are doing. And the other big thing in terms of leadership is to truly understand the problems that you're solving with the images that you capture. If you do not know what these photos are serving your clients, then it's basically chasing vanity driven images and creating pretty photos. Absolutely. But if they have no soul, if they have no essence, if they have no purpose, then these photos are best served for a magazine spread and not for your client's online presence. Thank you, John. We're talking to John D'Amato. John leads behind the lens as a branded lifestyle portrait photographer. We'll have more with John right after this. This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, shouldn't your printer be smart too? It is with HP+. These printers know when they're running low, so you always get the ink you need delivered right when you need it. Plus, you save up to 50% on ink, so you can print whatever you want, as much as you want, any time you want. Huh. That is pretty smart. Get six free months of instant ink when you choose HP+. Conditions apply. Visit hp.com slash smart for details. This episode is brought to you by PayPal. Ah, uh, online. It's where PayPal was born. But it's not all dancing cats and double rainbows in cyberspace. I mean, one minute you're trying to outbid Soup Boy 99 on some antique spoons. Next thing, your bank account is nothing but tumbleweeds. But now, PayPal has ventured out into the real world with non-dancing cats and actual rainbows, ready to help you start taking payments in person. It's a safe and easy way to get paid. Just generate your unique QR code in the PayPal app for customers to scan and start accepting PayPal in person today. Learn more at paypal.com slash us slash get QR code. This podcast is sponsored by Eddie Turner, LLC. Organizations who need to accelerate the development of their leaders call Eddie Turner the Leadership Accelerator. Eddie works with leaders to accelerate performance and drive impact. Call Eddie Turner to help your leaders one-on-one -on -one as their coach or to inspire them as a group through the power of facilitation or a keynote address. Visit eddieturnerllc.com to learn more. This is Karen Jacobson, the GPS girl, and you have reached your destination because you're listening to the Keep Leading podcast with Eddie Turner. We're back. I'm talking to John D'Amato, and we're talking about how he leads behind the lens as a branded lifestyle portrait photographer. John, before the break, we talked about what branded lifestyle photography is and why it matters to leaders. And quite frankly, why it's a form of leadership that many people may not easily recognize. 
I want to switch gears here just a little bit and talk about something else that you are doing that might matter to many of the people listening to our conversation. Everybody doesn't have to be a professional photographer. You've launched a program where you're teaching people how to use that iPhone that they have in their hands better to be an everyday photographer. Can you talk about that? Sure. It is called Shoot It Yourself. Develop a Portrait Photographer's Eye with Your Phone. And I launched it earlier this year, due largely because of the pandemic, because of a lot of people sheltering in place. And and even as things start to lift, uh, people's reluctance to have strangers in their house taking photos of them. So what I wanted to do is create an opportunity for experts and people who really just want to have high quality self-portraits so that they can use them to promote their business, their services and their brands online, but still have a level of artistry to their photos. So what I did was create a nine module course that breaks down the bare bone basics of how to take a well-composed image. And I've fortunately gotten a lot of positive reception from it. The feedback has been wonderful. There's been a lot of people that, wow, I didn't even know this was on my phone. I had no idea. All I had to do was hit a button. I'm like, I know, right? Right. <laughs> and, and essentially what this is about is geared towards people with smartphones. But what they're really learning is how to take a well-composed photo period, meaning you can take a photo with your phone or a professional camera and you'll still have the same understanding of how to leverage lighting and composition and locations and all of those very important critical elements to creating a well-composed frame and snap away and feel confident and feel good about the images that you're sharing. Yes. And I believe that has tremendous value. And I was so excited to see you launch that. I am not you by any stretch of the imagination, but I still carry a a camera when I go places and it never fails that when I want to be in the photo and I hand it to somebody, people look at me like I have two heads and they say, mm-hmm. what's that? What <laughs> button do I press? Mm-hmm. People aren't used to using regular cameras anymore, but everyone has the camera that's always with them and that's their phone. You don't have to give the instructions which button to press. Everybody knows how to take a photo with the mobile device. And so you're adding value by helping people get the most out of something that they already have, but are not fully maximizing. Yeah. Thereby, here again, I say you are leading behind the lens. Well, It's all about empowering people to capture, as you mentioned before, moments that matter. When you wrote that in the book, it is empowering people to capture their moments that matter when it's happening, because it's impossible to have a professional 24-7, but you have that phone with you 24-7. So now you have the creative license and the technology and the knowledge to be able to leverage that moment in a really, really wonderful, high-quality self-portrait. Indeed. And I think it becomes even more important now because I've always believed in capturing the moment. And that's why I wrote that in the book for you, that I am, people sometimes chide me a little bit when they see me coming because they they know I'm going to take a photo. Mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, it's really shown the value of those memories because I have this, this, and Facebook does a nice job of reminding us of all these events we've attended. But we get a chance to look back and we live those precious memories with our friends or our loved ones. And so I think more and more people are, are just can't wait till those opportunities open up again. And they're going to be taking advantage of the uh, ability to preserve those going forward if they took them for granted before. Oh, absolutely. I think there is going to be a major influx of house parties and, hey, we're all out and about and everybody's taking photos. I definitely foresee that happening once once we are, you know, more opened up, completely opened up as a country. And it's going to be I, I really look forward to seeing all those photos. Excellent. And nine modules, that's impressive. How long is it in total from start to finish if I want to take this? It is 48 minutes. Oh, okay. So we can finish it in nine hours. I'm sorry, one hour. (laughs) You've broken it down into nine digestible chunks. 
Yes. Yeah. Short and sweet is the way to go. You know, once upon a time when I worked in the television industry, that was the that was the phrase. Keep it short and sweet. Keep it short and sweet because attention spans can go. And especially when you're talking about technical based things, you want to keep these chunks manageable for people so it doesn't feel like they're drinking from a fire hose every five seconds. Want to keep it so that it is manageable and actionable immediately. Yes. And speaking of your television career, do you mind mentioning a little bit about some of the work you did in TV? Sure. For nine years, once I got out of grad school, I started working for a talk show, Maury, the Maury Povich show. And I worked there as a field producer. You are not the father. Uh, <laughs> you I know. can resist. I know. I know. And it's OK because you said my name such so wonderfully in the intro. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> but um, in terms of working there, it, it was a boot camp in a lot of the stuff that I do now in the sense of understanding how to tell a story and wide shots, medium shots and close ups and how to capture emotion, understanding the value of getting real close to a subject and truly showing their essence. You know, despite the fact that it was a five alarm fire every day on that show, I'm very grateful for the lessons that I learned and the ability to apply all of that experience to what I do now with my experts. Wonderful. John, what's the main message you would like to leave our listeners with today? I believe that one of the most important aspects of the way that you present yourself is through your photos because photos aren't meant to inspire people to immediately sign on the dotted line. But what they do inspire your audience to do is to pick up the pen. And that's the goal of your image content. When you have a perspective of understanding that it's meant to create an opportunity to start a conversation, that's when you really start to truly benefit from the power of visual storytelling. And that's something that I think everyone who is an expert, who is a leader, who is someone that wants to build a community of those that they serve, they need to keep that in mind. Wonderful. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed talking with you, John, and I appreciate all the great work you've done for me over the years. And in fact, I haven't been able to take advantage as much of your in-person services as I have your virtual services. And so go to John's website. He's doing all kinds of work for people. And John, tell us your website again and tell us any place else that you want people to know how to contact you. Sure. It's johndomato.com. And Fortunately, on every single page of my website, there is an opportunity to follow me on my social platforms at the bottom of every page. And if someone were more interested in learning more about persuasive visual storytelling and branded lifestyle portraiture, virtual photography, and all the other stuff that I offer to my clients, I would suggest you sign up for my blog. I put out 13 blogs a month, and you can do that through my website as well. Excellent. John, thank you for showing us how to lead behind the lens and for being a guest on the Keep Leading Podcast. Always a pleasure talking with you, Eddie. Thank you very much. That concludes this episode, everyone. I'm Eddie Turner, the Leadership Accelerator, reminding you that leadership is not about our title or our position. Leadership is an activity. Leadership is action. It's not the case of once a leader, always a leader. It's not a garment we put on and take off. We must be a leader at our core and allow it to emanate in all we do. So whatever you're doing, always keep leading. Thank you for listening to your host, Eddie Turner, on the Keep Leading Podcast. Please remember to subscribe to the Keep Leading Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen. For more information about Eddie Turner's work, please visit eddieturnerllc.com. Thank you for listening to C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.